Hey you guys, I'm Steven. I'm Giselle. And we're the Lover's Passport and today we're going to be telling you guys how we take all of our photos, a little bit of the behind the scenes. So first up, we are going to start off with all of the gear that we use. Just in case you need any recommendations, we're going to talk to you about where we started and where we are today. So first up, the tripod, probably the most important thing we bring. We use the Peak Design Travel Tripod. It's about this big, we're actually filming on it right now and it is hands down the best tripod we have used. We've tried a few other ones. They're too bulky, too big. This one is about the size of a hydro flask and makes it so easy to hike with, travel in an airplane with, and just bring everywhere. Now we do recommend investing in a good tripod to begin with because the tripod is what holds up all of your very expensive camera equipment. And so we have had friends in the past where they invest in just like a very cheap tripod off of Amazon or something and it falls over and you crack your lens or your camera. So although we don't necessarily recommend buying the same one that we have since it is pretty expensive, if you're in the market for a new tripod, recommend kind of going in between that moderate price range to begin with. Once you figure out your setup and what you like in your setup, then maybe upgrade later down the line. Uh, we originally started with like a moderately priced one off of Amazon, but the Peak Design Travel Tripod is just so perfect for our needs because we can bring it out backpacking, hiking, that kind of stuff. And we've literally stuck it in like rivers while it's snowing and on cliffs and stuff. And this thing does not fall over. So we trust our very expensive <laughs> camera equipment on it with our lives. So definitely recommend. It does have a lifetime warranty, which is nice because it is so expensive. So we know we're, we're basically never gonna have to buy another tripod again. So, and we did get the carbon fiber one, not the aluminum one. So we'll link that below as well as some other recommendations for tripods, but just make sure that you have a good enough one that you know it's not gonna fall over in wind or inclement weather where something may happen to your camera. So after that is our remote. So we use two different remotes. This is the Pixel Pro remote. It has the opportunities to do time lapses. It can do a lot of long distance photography. It has like a 250 foot range and that is our one that we use almost every single time, 99% of the time, but we also always carry a backup. We have the Adeline Pebble, which is what we used to use before the Pixel Pro. And that's the first one that we started off with. It's a little less expensive, definitely big, more beginner friendly. It's very easy to use. And that one does work up to around 300 feet away, which is how we get those crazy epic landscapes so far away while we're in it. This one is much, much simpler than the Pixel Pro. So that is one thing to note. If you guys don't plan on doing anything too crazy with the remote, this one is a little bit cheaper, a little bit more basic. Yes, and the nice thing about having two remotes is if one does die, you do have a backup, like whenever we're out shooting for clients or for our uh, social media business, it's very important that we have a backup because that's literally the only way we can take our pictures. There is the Canon app that we can connect to. I believe Sony and Nikon have similar things, but we don't really like it because it doesn't work from a very far away basis. So we tend to be at least 50 feet away from our camera when we are shooting. So the app doesn't really cut it for us. So having a remote is essential. And another thing is that the remotes are just more convenient with timing everything. Like I know a lot of people use intervalometers as well. The reason we like the remote is it's controlled. We're not gonna be spamming ourselves with tons and tons of unnecessary photos on our SD card. So it's nice that we can pick a pose, click the button, change the pose, click the button, instead of like having shots of like Steven running in and out of frame all the time and me adjusting poses and weird things to go through. It just takes a lot more time when I'm going through all the photos afterwards. So that's why we like using the remote. And next up is just the camera and the lenses we use. So the three lenses we use, we do always bring three. We have a 15 to 35 f 2.8. That one is amazing. Just for those wide landscapes, we want to be able to capture a full, uh, a full tree or a full mountain or a huge valley, it's perfect. Note that is a mirrorless lens only. The 15 to 35 works for the R5 because that's a mirrorless camera. If you're not on mirrorless, you're gonna want the 16 to 35. And then next up is we use the 24 to 70 F 2.8. This one is fantastic for getting a little bit more compression for portrait shots, for a little bit longer distance shots, but it is also still pretty wide at 24. So if you guys are looking for one one lens, the best investment, you don't have a huge budget for three lenses, I would recommend getting the 24 to 70. The last lens we use is the 100 to 400. I'm a big fan of the 100 to 400 just because it gives you a little bit of an edge 
over the 70 to 200 if I ever want to shoot wildlife or get a crazy compressed shot of a valley or a car driving. That's why we love that over the 70 to 200. And like we said, we started off with different setups in the beginning. Uh, the ADD was our first camera that we ever purchased from Canon. And it was a great beginner camera. It was a crop sensor camera, so slightly different than what we have now. And that one was really nice to learn manual mode on. We didn't really know what we were doing in the beginning. So two years later, obviously, now we're both professional photographers, which is fantastic. But you don't need professional photography equipment when you're first starting out. You can get a really solid budget camera to learn manual mode on because otherwise you're gonna be wasting thousands of dollars on a camera you don't really know how to use yet. So if you wanna learn manual, fantastic, start on a budget beginner camera. And if you haven't started learning yet and you want to learn, we do have a photography ebook that we sell and it teaches you everything you need to know from going to auto to manual. And so we will link that down below in the description if you're interested in learning more. And that is about it regarding gear. You need a camera, a remote, and a tripod. So let's get into how we take our own photos. We are going to be taking you through the full setup. Step one is figure out where we're gonna shoot from. So Giselle's over there. I tried to set her in between these two rocks. Give it a nice little centerpiece. We have our beautiful cloud inversion over here. And I'm way over here, scrambled through some rocks, but I love, love this little view. Anywhere over here is a little, a little too far to the right. There's not really anywhere to stand over there to the left. So this was a perfect little spot. Let's get it set up. Next step is we are going to set up tripod. We're gonna set up our Pixel Pro remote. And I gave Giselle the remote. So that way she can test if it works. So from this distance, Giselle, you wanna try it? You see how it's snapping? We have all of our settings here. Right now I'm shooting at F8. I have it at 150th of a second because we're not moving. ISO 500. And we are using the 24 to 70. We're gonna do two different exposures. We're gonna do one with this. So it is a little bit wider, but we are shooting for LL Bean this morning. So we are also gonna get a couple tighter shots just so we have some options. I switched the big daddy lens. This is the 100 to 400, as you can see. It's a little bit tighter. I went ahead and changed the settings a little bit. About to cruise over. The sun is out now. So we have some beautiful golden light coming in from the side. And if you guys are doing solo photography versus a couple's photography, or if you have multiple people to help you, make sure you set your autofocus. So when Giselle is in the frame, I'm setting up my composition. It makes it so easy, I can just tap her. We're focusing on her, so that way I know that she's in focus. If you guys are taking pictures of yourself, the biggest problem that we hear people say is that they aren't in focus in their pictures. So what I would do is set an area, like for instance, if we were taking a picture here, I would set the focus on the exact point where I'm gonna be standing, and I would then switch it to manual focus. That way the autofocus in the camera doesn't focus on some random bush, some other rock, like something behind you. Like a fly flying from them. Exactly, it's yeah. always gonna stay exactly where you want. If you don't know where you want it to focus, try and put your backpack there, try and pick a rock, a tree, something that you're gonna stand directly next to, just to make sure you're nice and crisp when you take your photo. And that's about it in terms of that. You, then Steven or whoever else is in your photo can run into frame. We snap a few on the remote, and then I will head on over and check the photos, make sure they look good. Really important that you check your photos, or even just do a little qu quick scroll through, because there's a lot of times where I will find just off the bat errors in terms of like somebody moved and it's blurry, or uh, the camera didn't end up taking as many photos as we thought, or we miss, or we messed up a pose, or something like that. So really important to go through and just quickly go through the photos on camera so that way you know if you need to do another round or two. We tend to do about two to three rounds of photos based on how many brands we're shooting for or if we're just shooting for ourselves. So it usually ranges in like five to ten minutes of shooting. It really does not take very long once you have your setup down and, what, and once you know what you're looking for and once your composition's all set up, it really doesn't take that long. And then once we take all the photos and we're headed out, we always back it up or everything we took that morning onto two different hard drives, Steven's and mine, plus the Lightroom Cloud or Adobe Cloud. So that way the redundancy is there. We'll never 
or hopefully never <laughs> lose all of our RAWs. And so super important to back up all of your files once you take them because that is a huge part of the process and that way you can start organizing them for post-processing and editing. The most asked question we get regarding our camera setup is, are you scared to leave your tripod there? We've been doing this for like what? Almost, almost two, years. two years now and no one has ever checked, touched our tripod. We've been in really busy areas. Sedona, we were next to about a hundred people. People were asking us like, wow, that's a really cool setup. I'm so that no people talk to you about it, but no one's going to take the camera, especially because we set it up. We go take our photos, maybe one minute, two minutes max. And then I come it. back. Exactly. Yeah. And another thing too is we're usually shooting at like sunrise or sunset in pretty, not inaccessible locations but they're not going to be like popular city sites now if you're doing this in the city you might want to think about you know how long you want to leave your camera gear i would never do this in the middle of san francisco <laughs> like san francisco bay area crime rates off the chart and photographers get targeted all the time so just be cognizant of your surroundings when you're doing this kind of shooting we've never had anything bad happen to our gear in the past two years but just in case, we do have camera insurance on all of our gear, which we definitely recommend doing. Uh, it's just an extra little peace of mind in the event that something does happen. They won't insure drones, but you can insure the rest of your setup. So that way, if something were to happen, you know that you're covered. And that is about it. So if you guys want to know more about it, you can follow us on Instagram or TikTok. We go over that almost every single day. Some fun little behind the scenes. You can follow us on our stories there. If you guys have any questions about how we take our photos, how we edit them, don't forget to drop us a comment down below. If you want to see more editing, Giselle does all of our editing and we also edit on our patreon so if you guys want us to edit any of your photos you're kind of interested in our process and how we go about it don't forget to check out our patreon as well we drop weekly videos on how to grow and monetize your social channels anyways thanks you guys for watching this video we hope this can help share a little bit of insights on our behind the scenes for all of our photos and if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more tutorials, adventure guides, and we'd be super stoked to have you join the Adventure Fam. All right, you guys. We'll see you on the next adventure.